What's up everyone and welcome to Urban Promise Los Angeles. On this video series, we explore stories of positive change and community empowerment. If we haven't met, I'm your host, co-founder and executive director of UPLA, Deontay Gray. And on this episode today, we'll be shining a spotlight on UPLA and the positive impact it's having on the local community. Thanks so much for tuning in. Let's get into it. Urban Promise Los Angeles is dedicated to empowering youth in order to transform communities. Today on our episode, we'll be diving into some of the actual and practical ways that we do that. And then also hearing some of the stories of real life change that's occurring with the families that participate in our programs. But before we dive into the nitty gritty and all of the initiatives that happen in house at UPLA, let's learn a little bit about the organization itself. So we've been around since 2019 and we're on the brink of our five year anniversary. It's crazy to think that five years has already gone by. But when I tell you, friend, that it's been a jam packed five years, I am not exaggerating. So. We arrived in Canoga Park in 2019 with the mission to transform the community by what I call asset-based community development. And what those assets were is the local youth. And we said, hey, what if we just came alongside the youth who live in a community who know all about it and place them in empowered positions of leadership? How then would the neighborhood change and transform? And that's honestly what the Urban Promise model is built and centered around, is local youth doing what they do best, in my opinion, which is leading. So we started in 2019, we started recruiting high school students, um, and we invested heavily into their development. We had to first help them see and believe that they actually can make a difference. One of the reasons I'm even in this role and in this field is because someone looked at me square in the eye and said, you can change the world. And I was naive, young, excited and ambitious enough to believe it. And that's what I've been working on ever since I got that advice. And that's the same thing that we've done with our teens. Since 2019, we looked them dead in the eye and we said, you can change the world by changing your community. And we had to make all of these things that seem like far off pipe dreams feel like attainable realities. So uh, that's a little backstory. Um, 2019, we set out with the mission to support the children and youth of LA by providing academic, spiritual, social, and emotional development that's needed to grow as a young leader who has everything that you need to make a difference and make an impact in your community. Our goal is that students will learn, earn, and return. What do I mean by that? Let's break it down. Well, first, you gotta learn. You gotta learn yourself, and you also gotta learn what it means to be a leader. And then, how does that apply to your community? After that, we want you to go off to college or whatever uh, path the Lord may put you on learn everything that you got, and then return. Dang, I messed that all up. Learn, earn, and return, all right? So you gotta earn your degree, you gotta earn some credentials, or as they say in the streets, you gotta earn some stripes. And then after you learn, earn, you return, which means you come back to your community and you reinvest what you've learned right here in the community. All of this is reinvestment. This is community development through investing the wisdom and the resources that you've acquired along the journey. Um, our vision is to reach a child, raise a leader, and restore community. So we're empowering young children and supporting them uh, by creating these phenomenal programs, which I'm about to get into, and that's how we reach a child. And then raise a leader is what I've been talking about for the past few minutes is recruiting local teenage leaders to come um, and grow as leaders and develop their leadership and practice it um, and hone their skills and figure out what their calling is and how they're uniquely gifted to bring change in the world. And then lastly, restore community is that same piece that I mentioned um, with the returning part. Um, essentially gaining all the skills, all the knowledge that you need, coming back to the community, bang, now we're making magic and now we're impacting the community. 
Man, we've had some success doing it so far. Again, we're in year five and our programs have been phenomenal. Um, so on the key list of our programs, if you were to walk into UPLA, you would see these immediately because it's what we do. The first thing is our after school program and our summer camp. Now those are two distinct programs, but those are the programs that we use as vehicles to reach the young children in our community. We invite them free of charge. Yes, I repeat, if I could zoom in the camera, I would say free of charge. We invite kids in to participate in those after school and summer camp programs where they're getting everything that they can need. We're feeding them, they're playing, they're building relationships with their friends, but it's not all fun and games. They're also um, practicing their reading, getting support with their literacy, and having individualized support with their homework, which is key. Now, our summer camp is just an extension of what we do during the after school hours. But we got so much more time. There's always a ton more kids and um, the energy is through the roof. I'm talking about every single day, Monday through Friday for six weeks, we got a hundred plus kids filling up the building and we're going bananas, like wall to wall. It's fun, it's hot. <laughs> Um, and it's just really an amazing summer. So those are our two programs that we offer free. Parents don't have to worry about that financial uh, barrier or burden, but instead they know that they got a place that's providing high quality after school and summer programs. One of the other programs that we offer is our street leader program. And the street leader program is what sits at the middle and center of everything that we do. It's our youth development and youth empowerment program. So again, we're inviting local teenage students to sit at the helm of leadership where they're growing, they're seeing themselves leading and everything that they thought possible within them and around them is changing because they're on the front lines of change. They are the change agents, they're making it happen, um, doing things as simple as reading a book to a child, helping them with homework, being a role model, a mentor, a tutor, and a counselor. That's their role a role model, a mentor, a tutor, and a counselor. And we have had some incredible high school students come through the program and make a serious impact in the lives of our youth who look up to them and in our community at large. And then the final thing is our alumni support program. Um, our alumni support program is geared towards our high school students who matriculate through our program, um, and while they're here as street leaders, again, those teen leaders, they're working hard to receive college acceptance so that they can be one of the first people in their family to go off to college. We call that a first generation college student where you're breaking barriers as the first in your family to be accepted to attend and to graduate college. That's one of the, the goals for our alumni and we're so close to it. Again, we're in year five so our oldest class of students are currently juniors in college, and we're so close to kind of completing what we call the cycle of restoration, where those young people begin to return and enact further change in their community. Whew. All right, so that was a mouthful, but now let's just kind of scaffold everything that we do here at UPLA, and I want to revisit that after school program. Kids need a safe place to go they need programs and they also need opportunities. That's what our after school program provides here in our local community. We're in a community that is under-resourced, it's underserved, and it's um, a lower income community in terms of socioeconomic status. So even if the resources were readily available, not many of our parents have the financial resources to participate in the opportunities. What does Urban Promise do? That's a sledgehammer because we're breaking down that barrier and that wall and now we're creating a place for kids to come and thrive. I just kind of think about my own childhood and what I did every day when I got off the bus in middle school. First, had to go home, clean my room, wash the dishes and do whatever I, I, I needed to do. But then I was straight down the street at the local rec center and that's where I spend my afternoons and my evenings playing basketball hanging with friends and trying my best to stay out of trouble. That's what Urban Promise is providing through our after school program. Um, so far, we've served hundreds of kids through our after school program, but it wasn't always like that. In fact, on our very first day in February of 2020, 
we had five kids show up to the after school program. Now five kids isn't bad, but we spent so much time recruiting, meeting with teachers and principals and going to parks and laundromats and wherever people are passing out flyers and inviting people to participate in our programs, but it was without success. So our first day, we're super excited. Only five kids show up, but we made it the best thing possible for those five kids. And from that, more and more kids started to come and more and more kids started to come until we got this full-fledged program. So um, I guess a quick interjection and encouragement to you. If you're starting something, if you're doing something, you're not seeing the results that you're hoping for, keep pushing through breakthrough is on the other side so that's the after school program i also want to dive into um, youth development now youth development is key and kids don't only need programs but they need opportunities as well and opportunities don't fall from the sky instead opportunities are created they're created with intentionality and they should be created with care that's what we've done with our street leader program is fashion this incredible program where we've thought through okay what do high school students need to be the highest and best versions of themselves well let's start with leadership development everyone needs to brushing up on their leadership skills and the high schoolers now have a place where they can come and they can learn tips like effective communication study habits public speaking I mean I can go down the list but it's equipping them with these things long before they even entered the quote unquote real world where they would need these skills. They're learning them at an early age and they're learning how to apply them as well. So leadership development, what else? Well, they need academic accountability. Maybe you were a star student back in your day. Some of our students need that extra push and I know what that's about from a firsthand experience. So providing that academic accountability in a place where students can come, they can study, they can look, and they can be influenced by positive peer pressure. Oh man, all right, let me just go off on this quick tangent, but the power of peer pressure is incredible. We know that, and we've seen a lot of horror stories with it, but the power of positive peer pressure, oh man, it's like none other. When you fill a room, with young people who are committed to the, the best path of um, you know, making the most of themselves and the opportunities that they have. They're studying, they're applying for college, they're working hard. Man, that type of energy is infectious and everybody wants to be a part of it. And you don't wanna be the person who is, is slacking, basically. You don't wanna be the odd man out when all of your peers are working hard and achieving these incredible accomplishments. You kinda of wanna get in on the fun. And I think that's the type of environment and community that we're cultivating here at Urban Promise through our youth development programs. Whew. All right, I got fired up. Let's see, what else, what else, what else? So after school, youth development, let's touch back on summer because, ah, no, 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 I get ahead of myself, I get ahead of myself, pause. Let's go back to youth leadership because I wasn't done. So I'm talking about uh, leadership development, I'm talking about academic accountability and positive peer pressure, but I'm also talking about the college application process. Now, not everyone has someone at home who's gone through college. It's not the reality for a lot of people. So what do you do if you're a young person and you're college motivated, but you just don't know the practical steps to go to? Well, some may say, just go to your guidance counselor for help. Let me just tell you, these counselors are overwhelmed with caseloads of hundreds of students. And that isn't an excuse, but it does make it hard if you're a student who has no clue of the process, man, it just makes it even more harder. So what do you do? Urban Promise has created this, this space and this support pipeline where we will walk you through every single thing you need to know about the college application process. And not just walk you through it in terms of providing the information, but we got you. We are you know, right by your side, hand in hand, making sure everything that needs to be done gets done as far as we can handle or as far as we can um, kind of make that happen. Um, now you got to put in your work and as they say um, in the Latino community, um, pontos las pias or put, put your batteries in. If I messed that up, my bad. Y'all know what I'm talking about though. Um, so you got to put your batteries in and you got to make an effort. 
But here at Urban Promise Los Angeles, we'll um, help you navigate a college website. We will help you walk through the Oh man, um, overwhelming steps of the financial aid and FAFSA process, especially this year since they revised it, uh, will help you walk through aid and scholarships and grants and awards and how to read an awards letter. We'll help you construct an essay, we'll edit that essay, and we'll make sure you are putting your best foot forward. Um, and then we'll also take you on campus to visit colleges that you wanna see. Because so often I believe that people don't reach their full potential because they've never been given the opportunity. So you can't be what you'd never see. So I think bringing a kid to a college campus unlocks so many doors for them. So how's that working out at UPLA? Well, I'm proud to say 100% of the high school students who have gone through our program have received college acceptance. That's huge. We're batting 100% here. We've had some incredible kids and some who absolutely thought that college was not for them and others who came in college motivated. They had a list of colleges that they wanna to go to and they were ready. So we've had everything, every end of the spectrum and everything in between, yet 100% of those high school students have received college acceptance. It's a huge stat that we're super proud of, um, but we also know that our high schoolers have put in so much incredible work. But that just speaks to the untapped potential that exists in these lower income, under-resourced communities of color. Like this is why we must invest in these communities because it's right there. Kids just need opportunities and opportunities don't just fall from the sky, but they're created with intentionality and with care. And because we've done that, 100% of students have um, received college acceptance. Not only that, students are receiving scholarship money. Let's go. So a lot of people think they can't go to college solely because of the, because of the financial aspect of it. But again, we'll walk you through FAFSA, we'll walk you through aid, um, and then we'll help you be even more competitive on your scholarship applications. So much so that, oh man, I wish I knew this set off the, off the top of my head, but um, a significant amount of our high school students have actually received four-year tuition-free scholarships, four-year tuition-free scholarships uh, where they're going to these amazing higher learning institutions and they don't have to pay a dollar. And sometimes they actually get paid to go to college because those refund checks hit. It's a beautiful thing and it's something that we're super proud of. And that's real life change. So the whole point of this, this video is to articulate and to illustrate the real life transformation that's happening. Our programs are one thing and we believe in those programs, but it's not just that, it's the people and it's the real lives that are being impacted because of the programs. All right, so let's switch gears a little bit and let's, talk, let's continue to talk about that high school piece, but from a different lens. So, College is a big piece, but also job training is a huge piece. Now, many people miss this, so I don't want you to, so please listen closely. Urban Promise Los Angeles pays, financially compensates high school students for their leadership at the after school and the summer camp program. My mind is blown. These high school students are coming and they're getting the resources, the support, and the guidance that they need to be the highest versions of themselves, but also they're getting a physical paycheck or direct deposit to make an impact in the lives of the youth of their community. Come on, man. I wish something like this existed when I was a kid. I would have made so many, um, so many more good decisions. I would have just made better decisions had I had an opportunity like this. I mean, kids have, teens that is, have a place to come after school. They find purpose in the work that they're doing. They're finding support um, in their goals that they're working hard for, and then they're making money. I think it's just a beautiful setup. But again, that opportunity was created with intention and with care. 
So the high school students come here, they get job training, and we're teaching them everything that they need to know about working with students, leading in a classroom setting, and working as a team, and you know, growing in professionalism. All of those things are gonna carry over no matter where they go next. We know that people won't be at Urban Promise Los Angeles forever. We hope that they will come back, be it to visit or to work within the organization and continue the work that we're doing. But nonetheless, like people are gonna go off, but through our job training program, we're equipping people with skills that they need to be successful. How do you navigate and how do you handle conflict with someone that you don't work well with um, as, as your peer who's been assigned to the same team as you? How do you work with a student who may be um, unresponsive, may be disengaged, or may just be flat out rude? How do you handle that as a young person? And then, man, when you have these young people in front of a classroom and they're trying to facilitate a lesson plan that they constructed, that they uh, planned and came up with, and they're not getting the type of response that they expected, man, you see their true colors, um, but it's an opportunity to really lean in and say, okay, how can we handle this better? I love talking with the high school students and I ask them, what have you learned about um, your, your teachers and your school setting since becoming a street leader? And without fail, they always talk about the appreciation, the respect and the admiration that they have for their teachers now that they're on the other side. <laughs> Now that they're leading the class, they understand it's not an easy gig, it's not an easy role. Uh, but that job training piece has just been really, really incredible. But also talking to them about kind of the basic soft skills of, hey, com you got to communicate. If you're running late, if you're feeling sick, if you have a, another commitment or engagement, you got to communicate those things because this is a job. And since it is a job for them, it's an added layer of accountability where you got to show up for your shifts and you got to be here because guess what? You got teammates and you got kids who are counting on you and looking forward to you being here. So you got to, you, you can't shy away from that. All right. Now, I want to talk about this paycheck piece. They get a paycheck and we also try to teach them how to handle their money and how to steward it well. But like for the high school kids, like for many of them, this is their first job. It's the first time they're earning income and they're receiving their very first paycheck by way of the work that they're, what they're doing at Urban Promise Los Angeles. I love asking them, hey, what are you going to do with your first check? They don't have to tell me. That's none of my business. But I'm always fascinated and I'm curious. So I say, hey, it's your first check. How are you gonna spend it? What are you gonna do? And a lot of them will go to the mall, they'll buy shoes, they'll buy clothes, maybe they'll go get some food. But when you hear those stories of, hey, I'm gonna help my mom out. I'm gonna give my check to my mom because she's done so much for us. Or I'm gonna help my dad out with this bill. Or when you run into a future oriented young person and they say, I'm saving it for college. I want to be ready or I'm saving up for a, a laptop. I'm saving up for my first car. All of these different things, man, it's powerful. But economic empowerment has to be a part of this equation for programs in lower income communities. It just has to be. We can't just create these programs just to keep kids busy and occupied. I think there's there's a time and there's a space for that. But we have to be able to go deeper. And I think the economic empowerment piece of the Urban Promise model is really essential because if given the choice of um, doing something really good and impactful in your community, but doing it on a voluntary basis or working at a fast food place where you can earn money, um, a lot of teens, even though they want to make a positive impact, are gonna have to choose that practical side of earning the money. Urban Promise sees that, we know that, so we try to make a way for students to be able to do both. So the part-time employment, the economic empowerment is having real life effects on young teenagers at an early age. Okay, so we're back and we're gonna round out this episode by talking about some of our auxiliary programs, if you will. 
We've spent some time talking about our core programs and exploring the impact of those programs. But now I want to talk about some of the things that we do, but we just don't have a formal program for them. Before I do that, let's go back to summer because I want to hit on the impact of summer. We spent some time talking about economic empowerment when talking about the street leader program, but I also want to talk about economics and economic value when we explore and consider what Urban Promise LA is doing at its summer camp. So on average, the six week summer camp program that we're offering at Urban Promise Los Angeles free of charge, on average, it costs $3,000 per kid in LA County. Again, $3,000 per kid for the exact same program that we're offering here at Urban Promise Los Angeles free of charge. I just think that that's something that's actually personal to me. I remember my first opportunity to go to summer, summer camp. I was in this youth program when I was a middle schooler and they said, hey, we're taking this big trip to Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's gonna be a week-long trip and we're gonna experience summer camp. I had no clue, I had no concept of what it was um, and luckily I was scholarship so I was able to go on this trip. Um, this is the furthest I'd ever been away from home. We stayed in cabins but I had the time of my life. I played with kids from all across the country. We played sports, we ate, we sang, we chanted and not only that but it was a Christian camp. So it was the first time where I really was excited. I'm talking about get hype for Jesus. Like we were excited about our faith and it was just such a crucial moment in my life and significant moment in my life. That's what we get a chance to offer our kids at Urban Promise. Because if it wasn't for that scholarship, I never would have had that opportunity. And the same is true for our kids here at Urban Promise. If it wasn't for us waiving that fee of summer camp and we're only able to do that because of the generosity of our individual donors and our community sponsors like the foundations that we partner with and the businesses who contribute to the work of urban promise la if it wasn't for their generosity we wouldn't be able to waive those fees and kids wouldn't have a place to come in the summer Every single day, Monday through Friday, six weeks, 8.30, 4.30, magic is happening right here in the community in LA. And it's a really beautiful thing. Um, but, you know, we have over 100 kids every summer participating in our programs and they're learning about STEM. They're uh, getting ahead in their reading and literacy. Where, statistically speaking, most students who are in lower income communities those lower income communities of color actually fall back two to three months in their reading and literacy because they're here at Urban Promises Summer Camp. They're actually either maintaining what they've learned in the previous school year or they're advancing one, two or three months or more in their reading and literacy because they're reading every day when they're at our program. It's an incredible thing and that's a real life impact that's taking place right here in the community. All right. so. We also got field trips in our summer camp program and students have the opportunity to load the bus every Friday and we're hitting a different place. We're taking kids to museums, we're taking them bowling for the first time, roller skating, uh, we're hitting the movies, we're doing every single thing. So kids are really bought in, they're really engaged because they're getting these like special opportunities to come and participate and like explore different parts of the city, ride a bus, go on a field trip. So that cultural enrichment piece is something that's really significant. Um, and who knows, it could spark a passion within these young kids um, as they grow to be leaders and they may have a field and a track that they're interested in. Next, we got arts, we got crafts, and we got recreation. So we talk about this holistic or this idea of holistic development and support, arts, crafts, and recreation, like that physical movement of the body and just this overall general concept of play where kids can draw freely, they can paint, they can run around, they can jump rope, they can play basketball or soccer or tag. Like those things bring so much healing to the soul. Um, you know, our, our high school and our college kids actually have jokingly, but also I think it's pretty serious. 
they jokingly but seriously said, UPLA has helped me heal my inner child. UPLA has helped me heal my inner child. And they're able to say that because they're participating in things that most kids get a chance to participate in, but when they don't, like, you feel like childhood is robbed, you know? Like, I, I can't imagine my childhood without wrestling with my friends, playing basketball in the community, running the streets, riding bikes. Like, those things are just so pure. Um, and those are just like the golden moments of your childhood. And now our high school students who may have been forced to mature and grow up quickly for whatever reason are now being able to relive and experience those things alongside our younger kids who are attending our programs. So all, I'm a big advocate for play. I think play is so very important and that's what they get an the opportunity to do here at Urban Promise. And it's healing the inner child of our young children, our high school students, our college students, and heck, even me. <laughs> One of the reasons why I like doing this work. Whew. Well, thank you so much for um, tuning in to this video. Uh, this series has been enjoyable. We're gonna continue to do it because we wanna advocate. We wanna raise awareness for the work that's taking place here in Canoga Park a beautiful community in Los Angeles, California at Urban Promise Los Angeles. It's so many incredible things and a newsletter, an email blast, and a social media post truly just can't uh, capture the full essence of the things that are taking place here at UPLA. So I hope you're enjoying these videos. If you are, subscribe, comment, give me some feedback like the video and then share it out. That's the purpose of it is to reach a wider and broader audience. So these videos are posted to YouTube, wherever you watch them at, just go ahead and share them. Thank you so much. And the last thing I'll say is if you wanna do a deep dive in the programs that we offer at Urban Promise Los Angeles, you can visit our website at urbanpromiselosangeles.org. And if you wanna financially contribute, two things. You can shoot me an email and you can give me a call. I'd love to talk to you about some opportunities that we have for you to partner with us financially. Or if you know that you're ready to give, you can just go to the website now, urbanpromiselosangeles.org backslash donate. Thank you so much for your support. Thanks for tuning in to this video. And until the next time, love, peace, and so long, my friends. Thanks so much.